In this video, I want to talk about power factor and how to find out the capacitor value for power factor correction. I also made a capacitor bank with bunch of switches as a learning kit. The power factor is a number from 0 to 1, which refers to the phase shaft between voltage phase and current phase in AC appliances. The power factor in resistive load such as incandescent lamp and heaters is equal to 1. That means there are no phase shaft between the voltage phase and current phase. But the power factor in inductive load such as motor and transformers is less than 1 because the voltage and current out of phase. The power in DC devices is equal to voltage times current. But the power in AC devices is equal to voltage times current times power factor. Assuming we have two AC appliances with the same power and the same voltage, but the power factor in the second device is more than the power factor in the first device. In this case, according to this formula, the first device will less power factor drawing current more than the second device with higher power factor. So as you can see, the current drawing of these two devices are not the same, while the power consumption in both of them is exactly the same. However, the power factor cannot affect the electricity price because domestic consumers charge electricity bill for kilowatt hours. But if you have UPS or inverter at your home, according to my experience, low power factor can decrease in the runtime of the battery. I have a video in my channel that show you the effect of power factor correction on the battery runtime of the inverter. You can find the link of that video below in the description. The other advantage of high power factor that allows you to use in thinner wires since the current decreasing after power factor correction. There are two types of power factor correction, active and passive. Active power factor correction using for nonlinear loads or harmonic loads such as LED lamps, CFL lamps and switching power supply. I have a video about active power factor correction in my channel. I put the link below in the description. So in this video, I just explained the passive power factor correction. Passive power factor correction using for motors and transformers. Usually it can be done by connecting some capacitors across the load. Let's take an example. Here I have this 15 watt motor. By using this power meter, I measured the input voltage, current drawing, and the power factor. The power factor of this motor, as you can see, is 0.56 only. I want to achieve unity power factor for this motor by connecting a capacitor across it. But how much should be the value of the capacitors? There are four ways to find out the value of the capacitor needed for power factor correction. Number one is using mathematical formula. I create this formula by mixing some other formulas. This formula gives you the capacitor value for unity power factor. So according to this formula, the capacitor value for this motor should be about 1.2 microfarad. The second way to find out the capacitor value for power factor correction by using online calculators. You can find the link of this calculator below in the description. You have to insert the power of your load in kilowatts and also insert the voltage, current and power factor. And as you can see, the capacitor value should be 1.2 microfarad, which is the same as I calculated before. The next method to find out the capacitor value for power factor correction by using microcontroller and this power meter module. This module designed for measuring the current, voltage, and power. I just put my formula in this code. Here, instead of writing 2 times pi times frequency, I just put 314. That is for 50 Hz system. If the frequency of your mains voltage is 60 Hz, you have to replace it with 377. And as you can see here, my Arduino can calculate the capacitor value for power factor correction for this small motor. 
It is the same as I calculated before. And finally, the last way, number four, to find out the value of the capacitor for power factor correction, which is a trial and error. In this method, we connect the load to the mains voltage and check in the current drawing from the load by a meter or power meter. Then start to add in capacitors one by another. The first capacitor is one microfarad. And as you can see, when I connect the capacitor across the load, the current drawing of the motor decreasing significantly. If I add in another one microfarad capacitor, the current start to increasing. So that means the capacitor value is excessive. So I use in 100 nanofarad capacitors in combination with one microfarad capacitor. And as I calculated before, the best capacitor value for this motor should be around 1.2 microfarad. So look at this curve. It shows you the relationship between the capacitor value and the current drawing. By increasing the capacitor value, the current drawing decreasing because you're correcting the power factor. But after this point, if you add in more capacitors, the power factor become even worse. So the current increasing again. I designed this PCB board as an educational project. Then I went to PCBWay.com and make an order. After two months, I received my package. Then I soldered the components on the PCB. It is nothing more than a bunch of capacitors that connected across the load by using these switches. So now I want to put this circuit with an AC power meter in this plastic box. First, I measured the dimensions of this AC power meter. Then I draw in the cutting place on the plastic box. Now I can cut it by using my mini grinding machine. But it is very noisy and also dangerous. So I have a better idea. I want to use in my induction heater to do that. I bought it from China about one year ago. It's working with voltage range from 5 volt to 12 volt. After I switched on my induction heater, I put my cutter inside the coil. So my cutter heats up quickly. Now I can cut the plastic box easily. So now I can connect any load to it and study the effect of capacitor value on the power factor. I connect one microfarad capacitor to each switch in column number 1, 2, 5 and 6 and 100 nanofarad capacitor to each switch at column number 4 and 3. However, as I said before, this is just an educational project. The capacitor bank in real life applications is much bigger. To be honest with you, when I was recording this video, the first switch stopped working. I mean the metal contact inside the switch welded together. The reason for that because when you connect a discharge 1 microfarad capacitor to the mains voltage, the capacitor draws in a very high current at the beginning for a short time. This current, so called inrush current. I'm using 125 volt 6 amp switch and according to datasheet it can handle 3 amp when use it for 250 volt. I have searched this problem on Google and I find that this is a common problem in power factor correction process even for big companies. There are different ways to avoid this problem. The first solution for this problem is using switches that can handle more current. The second solution is using a resistor through the capacitors to charge up the capacitors slowly to a certain voltage. But since the resistors waste the power as heat, so we have to short them out after the capacitors get charged. 
So in this case, we avoiding the inrush current and avoiding the power losses across the resistors. The next solution is using SCRs and zero cross detector. In this method, we switch down the capacitor when the mains voltage becomes zero volt. So we avoiding the inrush current because at this point the voltage already increasing slowly. I hope you learned something new in this video. By the way, any device or component I used in this video, you can find the links of them below in the description. Please like this video and subscribe to my channel. Thanks for watching.